Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Gluna Virtual Field Campaign. I'm Tatiana Benavides, and as we start today, I'm going to talk about what Igluna is about. Then we'll go on to Renato Crupon. He's the head of the Swiss Space Office, which will be giving a short welcome note. Afterwards, the student teams will present their projects in project pitches briefly, and we'll conclude this session with Jan Werner. He's a director general who will talk about the ESA Lab initiative and the ESA next steps towards moon exploration. Before I start saying what is Igluna, I would like to say why Igluna? Why are we doing this? Why are we inspired to develop technologies to go to the moon and even just to be in space? Actually, these technologies are not only for space, but they are also for Earth. They help us create a better life here on Earth because by creating these technologies for space, we focus on minimal resources, make them sustainable. And that's exactly what we need here on Earth. They also help us understand better about the moon, other planets, the universe in general, and this deepens our knowledge of Earth as well. But these space missions are quite expensive. They are complicated, required complex technology development and ma many collaborations across the nations. And this is what we try to do with Igluna. So it's a concept model on how the collaborations can work internationally with universities working together with industry space agencies, as well as research organizations and even non-space actors, all together to develop fresh bottom-up ideas into technologies so we can go to the moon and further beyond to space. The collaborations in Igluna work because we have different disciplines. So the topic of Igluna habitat it's very broad and this way we can include the architects doing conception and structure taking care of building the habitat but we also have the life support with agronomists growing the plants doing the waste management we have engineers studying electronics mechanics taking care of power management communication and navigation there's also the designers with the human well-being aspect so humans or astronauts are actually happy in space the radiation monitoring the habitability and scientists studying about geology and doing experiments for astrobiology. Every student team in Igluna brings what they are best at, their own particular discipline, and we put it together into this big umbrella to make a big project all together, better than being alone at their own university. And at the Swiss Space Center, we do the coordination of this project. What we do at the Swiss Space Center is to support institutions, academia, and industry to access space missions and related applications. We do this promoting the interaction and supporting the different stakeholders within Switzerland, but not only, also outside, in collaboration and working together with the European Space Agency and the Swiss Space Office. At the Swiss Space Center, we have over 40 members coming from industry, university, and research organizations. They are spread all around Switzerland, and our headquarters are based at EPFL in Lausanne, the French part of Switzerland, and also at ETH in Zurich, the German part. And one of our big projects we're running is this ESALAB at CH activity called IGLUNA, where we engage students to innovate and showcase technologies. We ran the first edition last year, concluding in 2019, last summer, with Igluna 2019, then moved forward now with Igluna 2020, aiming to continue for 2021. Our mission is to provide this testbed for students to bring their technology so that they can demonstrate how to sustain life in an extreme environment. Over the last two years, we had over 300 students coming together from more than 20 universities across the world. Being part of the ESA Lab initiative, we focus in three main aspects. We have the cooperation to have this international platform with interdisciplinary collaboration, the inspiration of students to train them as the next generation of space experts, and the development of technologies needed for the future of space exploration. With the first project last year, we showed how to demonstrate how this ESA Lab initiative could work. We collected lessons learned also to support future ESA Lab activities, and we proved this way of collaboration with students across Europe. The topic was a habitat in ice, so we went to a glacier here in Switzerland in Klein Matternhorn in Zermatt. Students put their experiments on top of the glacier, performed their, their test, gathered data, as well, inside the glacier in a cave, they built a habitat, put their technologies inside, greenhouses and other equipment as well, to show how to sustain life in an extreme environment. And downtown in Zermatt, we were at the Vernissage Art Gallery, where students also created this exhibition with concepts of living on the moon. 
particularly focusing on the human well-being aspect. We received many important visitors, like you can see the Director General, the Swiss Space Office, other representatives from, Swiss, from ESA and from the industry, space experts, even younger generation with school tours we hosted, and in general public as well enjoyed the exhibition and the field campaign. With the positive feedback we collected, we moved forward for the next edition, and now IGLUNA 2020. We increase the challenge. Now the space habitat is with remote operations and we keep based with the ESALAB initiative building on the heritage from last year and pushing these technologies farther. So the bottom up ideas could be closer to going to a real space mission in the future. This year we had 15 student teams participating each from their own university coming from 10 countries in total over 150 students in this academic year. And we had different topics, the life support topics. We had several student teams, also habitat conception and structure, communication, navigation, power management, human well-being, and science. These are the universities from the participating teams and their countries as well. And I would like to acknowledge as well our sponsors, particularly in Lucerne, that we were supposed to be there this summer. Hopefully, we'll see you there next year. We started this year in September, last year actually, uh, with a kickoff event where the students came together here in Switzerland. We hosted the event and the students started to get to know each other, get to know their projects and collaborating together, finding common interfaces between the projects to actually work together. And from the Swiss Space Center, we gave them inputs about what is Igluna, but also provided tools about project management, about sponsoring, and everything they would need throughout their project for successful completion. One of these tools is the systems engineering best practices, so teaching students about requirements, concept of operations, everything that's needed for formal space projects. And we had different reviews. We had the preliminary design review where we went to visit the student teams, the critical design review, usually as a video conference, and the readiness review, which also was supposed to be a visit, but due to the virus situation, we had it virtually as a video conference as well. In March, we hosted the midterm event. Again, it was supposed to be a physical event, uh, but again, to the situation, we changed to a virtual concept. So students joined and connected online from their own countries in their universities or at home. We also had experts giving inputs to the students. We gave updates on ourselves. And actually, we proved that this was a quite successful and efficient way to communicate. We gathered the information needed for the students to close the interfaces in preparation for the field campaign. The field campaign original concept was to be in Pilatus in Lucerne on the top of the mountain, where students would have placed their experiments, their projects there, to actually test them from downtown Lucerne at the Ferkers House, Swiss Museum of Transport, with a control room. The idea was for them to monitor and operate the technologies that would be placed in the extreme environment at Pilatus, where there is, uh, there is no snow and there's no ice like last year in Cermat, but there's thunderstorms, there's strong winds, and there's even hail storms outside. And at the museum, we would have also had a, an exhibition so the public can all, also learn more about what the concepts developed in Igluna are throughout the year. Now updated again because of the situation, we still do the best we can in spite of the limitations, so we keep the same objectives. We bring together the student teams now virtually, we support them with their tests so that they can collect results, we give them a platform for them to showcase their project to their general audience, increasing the public awareness of space and the outreach, and we also support the ISALAB initiative strengthening the IGLUNA network. I, at a glance, the virtual campaign schedule goes like this. So we're now at the inauguration ceremony. Then we have the project shows this afternoon. Then every day the project shows are in the morning, the space expert talks in the afternoon. Towards the end, we have internal meetings to give students a final evaluation and feedback together with the experts. And then we have a space award ceremony where the student teams that show most motivation and commitment will be awarded with the special prize to pitch before the closure ceremony to ESA Director General and representatives of the Swiss Space Office, their project to discuss and get more feedback. We're very excited. Our space expert public talks, usually in the afternoon here in Europe, uh, that are joining the event. We have from iSpace, Philip Ludwig, 
uh, rover navigation engineering. We have Claude Nicolier, our Swiss astronaut, who will be giving two talks, one about moon exploration and one about Hubble, 30 years anniversary actually this year. Fabian Jordan from Astrocast will also be talking about the Internet of Things, a network for the planet. And then Timon Shield and Sebastian Lawrence from Spaceship IAC in ESA, they will talk about their experience and their projects as well. And last, Sylvan Chari from the University of Paris will give a presentation about space colonization. We're also very honored with our special guest, Jan Werner is a Director General and Renato Crouppon, head of the Swiss Space Office, who, who are joining our special ceremonies. And last but certainly not least, Alexander Gerst, who will be presenting his Horizons mission and doing a question and answer session on July 16. He's an ESA astronaut, so don't miss it. Now with this, I would like to hand over to Renato Crouppon, head of Swiss Space Office, for some welcoming words. Welcome, Renato. Well, thank you, Tatiana, for your great introduction. Let me take the opportunity to greet uh, the ESA di Director General, Jan. Good morning. Good morning to the Gluna teams. It, it is a distinct pleasure and honor to share some words with you today on the occasion of the opening of the Igluna virtual field campaign. Uh, curiosity is what moves human humankind forward and drives us to push relentlessly the boundaries of science and technology. Although much remains to be discovered on our planet, space exploration can certainly be seen as the ultimate frontier. Thanks to the European Space Agency, Europe has been able to build over the past 50 years or more, the capabilities to be an essential part of human space exploration. And I'm very proud that Switzerland, as a founding member of the European Space Agency, has contributed from the beginning to ESA's successes. Today, Europe's technology finds itself in the most remote corners of our solar system, as well as on the International Space Station. And our astronauts, uh, we talked about uh, Alexander, are living and working in space. And most importantly, tomorrow has started. Europe will be part of the endeavor to return humankind to the moon in a sustainable and permanent way. Let me congratulate the uh, 15 teams and more than 130 students for their exciting contributions. Keep up with your curiosity and ingenuity as it will allow you to make a difference in the future. I wish we could be all present in Lucerne today or even on the Pilatus. Unfortunately, this has not been possible due to the coronavirus pandemic. Let me take the opportunity to congratulate the Swiss Space Center and the Igluna team for their ingenuity in putting together this very exciting virtual format. I look forward to your project presentations and wish you all the best and a successful week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Renato, for your kind words. Now let's move forward for the student teams that will be presenting their projects briefly. So now you see the screen. Let's go to P1, <laughs> Melissa. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Grace Crane and I'm an aspiring space agronomist researching at ETH Zurich in Switzerland and I'm also the project manager for the Melissa Igluna team P01. We are an international group of PhD and postdoc researchers working at six different institutions across Switzerland, Belgium, Spain and the Netherlands. Our research projects focus on resource recovery from wastewater, hydroponic crop production, modeling of circular systems, and space to earth applications to name a few. We are collectively working on the European Space Agency project, MELISSA, the Micro Ecological Life Support System Alternative, a project that focuses on creating a bioregenerative life support system for long-term space missions and future lunar and Martian bases. Thus combining our individual research foci and the ESA MELISSA concept, our Agluna project was conceived. It focuses on linking human urine treatment technologies to food and oxygen production. This is achieved through the conversion of CO2 and human urine using bio-based technologies into viable nutrients for plant and algae production, which in turn provides clean oxygen, water, and food for astronauts. In addition, these technologies are highly transferable for terrestrial applications and optimizing and supporting sustainable and circular systems on Earth. Thus, 
We look forward to showing you our system and taking you all on a journey to space this afternoon at 1300 hours or 1 p.m. Thank you. Hello, my name is Victoria. I'm a master's student uh, in EPFL in uh, robotics and space system engineering. Um, this afternoon, we are going to present uh, the Grobot Hub project. Our goal is to design an automated and autonomous system to grow and harvest vegetables in extreme environments. You might have seen us uh, last year. Uh, this year, we developed the full system and also worked on the vegetables and aeroponics, and we advanced a lot on that. Uh, why do we work on this kind of system? We want to provide a continuous food production and also allow, allow astronauts uh, time to perform other activities. Uh, to do that, we use a lot of uh, different things, and as you will be able to discover this afternoon, we had a team of 30 students uh, in EPFL. And this year, we also worked on another system, which is called the root system, and is meant to grow potatoes, carrots, and other vegetables that grow in the soil. We had a lot of troubles due to COVID-19, but we were actually able to build that prototype and also advance on other parts of the project, and we'll be presenting that this afternoon. Hello, everyone. Question is how to provide fresh, tasty, and healthy food for astronauts in space. The food for astronauts are designed mostly to give all the nutrition that are important for a health bounty function. But they are not fresh, not really tasty, and often doesn't look very yummy. In the near future, sustainable food production will be very important. Even on our planet, we will face a lot of challenges in the near future, like climate change, hunger, or even waste management. How does it look like? You can see right now in the short trailer. Have Hi everyone, I'm Maria Vittoria Kerchi from uh, Sapienza University of Rome in Italy. I am the project manager of B4V GERM uh, our, and our project is a virtual greenhouse experimental lunar module in collaboration with ENIA, the national agency for new technologies, energy and sustainable economic development. And uh, our project is based of, on a, of a development of a twin design tool using virtual simulation and real operation and uh, to improve astronaut training and space structure development for future space mission. And uh, our goal in, um, in Luna 2021 is uh, next, thank you is uh, to improvement uh, of uh, the real greenhouse clues uh, seagull towards a more autonomous closed loop uh, through the addition of a new technologies and consequent adjustment and improvement uh, on of the virtual reality simulation content and graphics uh, then uh, in Gluna 2020. Thank you everyone, see you tomorrow at, at, at 11 a.m. Hello, I am your Na, representing a team from the Warsaw University of Technology in Poland. I would like to tell you about our project, Sample, Semi-Autonomous Modular Plant and Other Life Sustaining Experiment. We came up with the idea when we considered how small a human habitat on the moon would be. 
because plant cultivation requires a lot of space, we wondered if it would be possible to tra transfer it from the habitat to the outside into the hostile uh, environment of the moon's surface. You can see the simple idea in the top picture. Seeds would be planted inside, the, our, uh, inside our module in the habitat by an astronaut. Then the module will be transported outside. After an appropriate amount of time, it would be taken back into the habitat. The collected plants would be ready to eat. To achieve this, we had to plan for strong environmental protection, especially thermal. Additionally, in order to have as high autonomy as possible, and for the module to be low maintenance, we designed a closed cycle of matter inside the module and automated monitoring of the internal environment. We have learned many valuable lessons throughout the project, about which you can hear more during our project show tomorrow on Saturday at 1 p.m. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we weren't able to implement all of our design solutions. However, we plan to take our project to the next level in the next Igluna edition. We will not only improve on the current project, but also include new ideas and solutions. We want to design a more advanced and efficient cooling system. Uh, the main project objective will be to test lunar soil treatment with the use of bacteria which neutralize harmful substances. This will help reduce payloads to the moon and is in line with the in-situ resource utilization strategy. Thank you. Hello, I am George Lertus, a PhD candidate with MIT's Engineering Systems Lab, working on sustaining human life on the moon and Mars, and also the team lead of the Hydration Tool project. Welcome to the Glona Virtual Field Campaign. In the next decades, we will be exploring other celestial bodies. But to do this sustainably, we will need reliable sources of local water. The good news is that ESA and the NASA spacecraft orbiting our moon and the red planet have recently detected signs of water ice. Our goal is to develop and test a remotely operated water exploration and production system to search for ice at the lunar south pole and to produce water from buried ice sheets on Mars. The Hydration 2 system is a prototype designed to be mounted on a remotely operated rover. Our concept is to drill through the dirt and rock layers and into the buried ice sheet, then melt the water and pump it to the surface. We use the drilling mud to stabilize the hole walls and the neural network analyzes the drilling data to understand the layers of material that cover the ice. These experiences and data will allow astronauts and engineers to improve future water production systems. Our project began at MIT in 2017 as Hydra and continued in 2018 with the invention of the hydration concept, both with support from NASA and the US National Institute of Aerospace. Our expanded team went international in 2019 with students from MIT, EPFL, and the University of Tokyo, and with additional support from the Swiss Space Center. We have diverse interests, backgrounds, and experiences, and this diversity is mirrored into the several capabilities we are building into our project. I hope you will join us for our project show later today at 3.30 p.m. Central European Time, 9.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, where my colleagues and I will share our story of developing hydration too over the last year. Thank you. Hi, I am Carlos Roman from PL7 Habitat from BTU Cottbus in Germany. We are an architecture master's and bachelor's students team in charge to make the habitat for the Luna 2020 project. So humans can go to space and be able to live comfortably and have the proper space for experiments with life in outer space, in this case specifically in the moon. We thought about an inflatable and flexible dome structure so we can have a lightweight and easy to transport habitat. We have two main goals at the moment, and these are to develop the individual physics model for the Earth to keep experiments in conditions and safe, and where we are also thinking and about a possible space village community with all the facilities for a 12 people group that could also be developing and doing research in the moon and space. Now, we have an inflatable models for the Earth that consists in a two-layer structure inflatable 
tubes that are supporting the whole habitat and several layers of foil to give pressure and stability and stability to the project. And we also include an airlock and enough space for two experiments of this same Sluna project that are PO2 Growbot Hub and PO3 SWAT to work and to fix in the habitat. And our for our moon vision is the space village community thought about to a 12 people group with all the facilities required. That that means the space for living and for walking, including kitchen, bathroom, dormitories, and also labs and offices. I really hope that you're interested enough in our project already and to join our project show on Sunday at 1 p.m. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Araño Romero. I'm the team leader of Ampex 20. In cooperation with the Moonfiber team of the Institute of Textile Technology and Institute of Structural Mechanics, and like with design at the RWTH Aachen University in Germany, our international team has successfully contributed to the development and construction of the first fully automated miniaturized spinning machine that could produce continuous fibers, for example, made from moon soil. In order to transport the necessary payload into space, for example, for research missions or the construction and supply of manned lunar stations, we face great economic challenges as well as technologically complex tasks. With payload costs of 1.1 million euros per kilogram to the lunar surface and space projects requiring large fresh volumes, weight reduction seems to be essential. However, raw materials from the Moon or Mars in the form of regolith are perfectly suited to produce habitat building materials and thus reducing freight costs for future space missions. To this end, continuous mineral fibers, which will be produced on site with our miniaturized and fully automated spinning machine, can be directly utilized to produce fiber composites, thermal insulation, filters, and hydroponic mineral wool for plant cultivations, among other things. Last but not least, we would like to thank our sponsors for their support and dedication to our cause. In spite of the current situation we are suffering, they stood by us. We are very grateful for the sponsorship of Saxonia with their beautiful platinum road in Crucible, Maxon's robust motors, and the energy efficient induction system of COES. Thank you to Airbus for the support in particular with Black Wave, who manufactured the reliable prototype of our winder. The Strelic electronics have made it possible for us to automate the system, and the precise pyrometer of, uh, of Optris has also been essential. Thanks to Erkan for providing us with fire extinguishers for our safety. And finally, we would like to thank the Hans Hermann Foss Foundation for the, for the final support, and of course, the unconditional support of our university, RWTH Aachen, and in particular, the Moonfire team. Please join us to, for a presentation at Monday 13th at 11 a.m. Central European time. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Francesco, the team leader of the design group Focus from the Politecnico di Milano in Italy. We are an international team made by four students coming from Italy, Colombia, and Brazil, and supervised by the space experts and PhD design professors Annalisa Dominoni and Benedetto Guaco. Thanks to the Space for Inspiration course, which is the first and unique course of space design recognized and supported by the European Space Agency and held by our supervisors, we already had the opportunity to better understand the importance of the well-being experiences in space environment during our Master of Science. And this was really helpful during the development of the Grand 2020 project. Based on MUNI, the new modular lunar base station designed by the Polytechnicos team during the previous Aglon edition, and with the main aim to help astronauts to feel like home, the project wants to bridge the gap between food production and its consumption through the use and the design of new innovative kitchen tools. More specifically, we developed a new V disinfection tool, a new oven and a special coffee maker that don't need any kind of external heat or energy source to cook food or to prepare co coffee, and a new manual ice cream maker that enables astronauts to prepare it directly on the lunar surface. To make the project more feasible and closer to the reality, we started a collaboration with Su the Superforma company, a digital design and manufacturing laboratory that helped us in the 3D printing of our known pro functional prototypes. The idea was to print our objects using materials that could simulate as much as possible the lunar regolith. And according to Superforma experts, 
we decided to use porcelain as one of the best clay typologies for the regolith simulation. But I don't want to tell you too many details today, since I would really like to see all of you during our project show on Monday 13th at 1 p.m. Thank you so much and see you there. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mayank. I am a team lead for Project Celestial P11 Group. We are uh, six international students and we are uh, working towards the development of communication system for lunar projects. In Igluna, we are developing a software-defined radio-based communication system and antennas that can work on multiple frequencies. Why are we doing this? Because there are multiple uh, satellites which are going up there and we want to go for reusability of satellites. Uh, we are already reusing rockets in the space industry. I think now the next step for us, our space industry, is to reuse satellites. And there are many variables to it, but we are trying to answer one particular variable, which is the feasibility of communication system to adapt to different requirements of the communications at the different missions on the same commissioned satellite. How are we doing this? We have developed our own firmware, GNU Radio, and we have used patch antenna, which works on multiple frequencies. We have designed our own radio frequency circuits that will be used, and we have designed our own uh, link budget to ca calculate and estimate the signal strength and losses during the transmission of a signal. We are using off-the-shelf uh, software uh, defined radio, and this will be used uh, together. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have shown in the slide the communication system and the antennas uh, to remotely reconfigure uh, the communication system while it is in the project. You will see this on 14th July, 11 a.m. Uh, CEST. We are also uh, got a lot of uh, partnership from uh, various space uh, uh, from various uh, space companies such as uh, OHB, uh, Rodian Shorts, and we also have a lot of academic uh, support to enable us this. Last year, we also won you know Masters Award, uh, and we were third in the OHB Challenge category. So see you guys, and uh, please uh, be there on 14 July. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Harm, and I'm the team lead for Team 12 in Estonia. We're a team of seven students from the master's program of design and technology futures at the Tallinn University of Technology. For the past year, we have been working on exploring the opportunities of smart clothing and wearable technology to innovate the daily wear of astronauts living inside the moon base. The reason we decided to look into this is because while spacesuits are highly technological pieces of equipment, the clothes worn by astronauts when they are inside their bases or their habitats are still very basic so far. And we think there's a lot of opportunity for development in this area. <clears throat> if we could go to the next slide, please. Then you will see that we developed two different concepts. And yeah, through these concepts, we explored two different areas. One of our solutions is um, aimed at reducing the waste in space by uh, using modularity in clothing to reduce the amount of times that clothing needs to be washed and extend the wearing time. This is not only more sustainable, but also saves water and saves cargo space in the equipment that needs to be brought up to the moon. Our second concept uh, tries to improve the experience of human monitoring by using integrated wearable sensors inside the clothing so astronauts can uh, monitor their health and their performance in workouts without giving it a second thought. Through these two solutions, we wanted to explore human well-being as well as sustainability on the moon base. And to test our concepts, we also uh, develop prototypes for both concepts together with our partner, Protex. We're very excited to showcase our work on Tuesday at 1 p.m. during our project show, and we hope to see you there. On behalf of P13, I'll present briefly their project. So what they're doing is augmented reality agent 
to have safer space missions. And they actually focused on biometrics as well, visual tool guidelines, environmental conditions, and navigation routes. How they do it, they designed and manufacture a smart augmented reality navigation system for future space missions. The team comes from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, and they are a student association called BEAM. These are their partner and sponsors, and they will be happy if you learn more about their project during their project show. Don't miss it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Poon, and I am the team lead for project number 14, LDMS for Life. We are a team of five PhD and postdoc students based uh, from the University of Bern in Switzerland. And for the past years, the question that we have been working on is a question that Humankind has been asking itself for centuries, millennia, maybe since there were first people. Um, how did we get here? Why are we here? Um, and how did life originate on Earth? Um, and maybe even more fascinating, is Earth really as unique as we think? Or are we not as, uh, as alone as it seems? To this goal, we've been working on uh, an instrument that can be used to detect life outside Earth. Um, the instrument you can see on the right-hand side was introduced into a model rover, which was uh, motorized and interactive with the goal of um, outreach towards the general public to show everyone how amazing we think our new instrument is. Um, the entire rover was produced through uh, 3D manufacturing, additive manufacturing, uh, and even though we had some problems with uh, delivery due to the COVID-19 virus, the rover is now actually uh, working. And um, as you would see in our project show next Wednesday, uh, we can use it for any outreach event to show anyone uh, how we think it might work. Um, we hope to see you there, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Drew and I'm the team leader and systems engineer for PowerHub. We are a group of fourth and fifth year master's students from the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland, in the UK. Uh, and our objective was to design a resilient and distributed system which could provide power for the life support requirements and also the research and exploration activities of the base. Our solution involves a number of concepts. These include solar power satellites, which are essentially a large array of solar panels which orbit the moon. These work in conjunction with the solar reflector satellites, which serve to increase the efficiency of our system. And then the power is transferred to the lunar surface using microwave wireless power transmission. The power can be stored a number of ways when it's on the surface, including by our battery system, which you can see on the uh, left-hand side of the screen there, and also our lunar, lunar soil uh, regolith thermal storage system, which is at the bottom there. And then on the next slide, you can also see one of our storage methods, which is a regenerative hydrogen fuel cell, um, which enables us to use the ice already available on the lunar surface to create hydrogen and oxygen gas, which can then be turned into power and this can work in both directions. Particularly, the fuel cell and the ther thermal storage system enable us to use the resources already on the moon, which reduces cost and complexity. These systems are all very relevant back here on Earth as well, and could help us achieve a greener and more sustainable future. Lastly, I just want to thank our amazing sponsors, uh, RS Components, uh, who have helped us to produce our prototype battery system uh, despite having to produce it at home due to the lockdown restrictions. And I also want to thank everyone who donated to our crowdfunding campaign through GoFundMe. We look forward to showcasing our project for you next Thursday, 16th of July at 10 a.m. British Summer Time and 11 a.m. Central European Time. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and good morning. My uh, name is Bogdan, and today I'm representing the rover team from Polytechnica University of Bucharest. We are a group of five Romanian aerospace engineering students who, for the last nine months, have successfully designed, manufactured parts, and integrated technologies with which you can develop a six-wheel robot platform with an autonomous navigation that can operate in an extreme environment. 
The project presents a remotely operated rover concept with various development challenges associated with exploration objectives and requirements on Moon, Mars, and also Earth. Due to its lightweight structures, wheels design, and suspension systems, the rover is capable to operate on different terrain configurations such as rocks, sand, and ice. The main goal of the demonstrator is to prospect the surroundings by generating a detailed 3D map of the terrain and natural artifacts on the targeted area, providing necessary information to assess the interest and feasibility for future explorations in, in terms of setting the base, mining, remotely operation, or landing the site. Uh, next slide, please. So our project aims to deliver a technological demonstrator that can be built with commercial off-the-shelf components and which can autonomously plot a path using algorithms for objective avoidance and difficult terrain navigations using data from a circular array of laser sensors. So we are glad to invite you on the 16th of July in the afternoon to uh, watch the Gluna live broadcast and uh, show you more about our project. Thank you all and we want to thank all our sponsors for this, uh, this help. Thank you guys. Thank you to all the student project teams for presenting their projects in this brief time. And we expect or we would like to invite you and we hope you are now curious to learning more about their projects and join their project shows during the next 10 days. And now I would like to give the word to ESA Director General Jan Werner. Thank you, Jan, for joining us today. Good morning, Tatjana, and good morning to everybody. I'm very happy that we are together today to inaugurate this IGLUNA 2020. This is, of course, for me a very special case because I was there already last year in, uh, in Zermatt and Klein Matterhorn, and I was really curious to see it this year um, on Pilatus. However, this is not the case. I will now present you a presentation where I show you a little bit about uh, how ESA is looking to this and how we are uh, looking to um, the, the also to Igluna, and therefore I'm starting my presentation, and uh, I hope that you can see it well. So um, what we are doing now, I, Tatiana is not working, right? It was working for a moment. Yes, I try again. Uh, that's okay. Let's see. Okay, so. Um, Igluna is for us a very special thing. It is what we call an ESA uh, lab. What does ESA lab mean? ESA lab is something where we are looking to different challenges of space. And you see the, here is a list of, of challenges we have on our global situation. So climate change, yes. And if you look to the very uh, second but last, it helped coronavirus. And all of these things can be tackled by uh, space. But there is one point. And Renato Kuhn already mentioned it, and this is curiosity. Curiosity, as uh, Renato was saying, is the strongest driver of humankind, and therefore it's important not to forget about that. Now, ESA-LAB is very special. ESA-LAB is something we are doing together with research organizations or with universities. The idea is to really to merge uh, ideas from ESA, merge ideas from students, and really come together experts and students to do something for the future of space and therefore we set up this ESA lab initiative and here you see the different initiatives around the world uh, or i should say first of all around europe but we are also open for some activities uh, beyond europe and you see in the very top you see ESA lab at ch this is uh, the igluna uh, idea so it is the ESA lab together with uh, switzerland not only with one university, but as we heard already, with several universities. The ESA Lab initiative is part of our overall activities. Of course, we are doing basic research, applied research, technology developments, projects, missions, and go to market and applications. And in this, uh, in this uh, seamless grid of innovation where we put together different areas, we have the ESA Lab looking very at the very beginning of this, uh, of this uh, line. And then we have the ESA Business Incubation Center, and also from the past, we know that even students coming from ESA Lab then uh, entered the ESA Business Incubation Center. And then we have also for uh, companies what we call the ESA Grant Challenge. So all of this comes back again to curiosity. And here's a quote of a big philosopher. He said, we will not cease from exploration until we come back to where we came from and see the place for the first time. I must say, I'm a civil engineer. I don't understand this quote but I found it very nice, so therefore I'm quoting it here as well. And this is what exploration is about. 
we are looking into space and ESA has an exploration program, an envelope program, which looks to three destinations. There is the International Space Station, there is Moon and Mars. Of course, we have also a science mission where we go beyond Mars uh, to other planets uh, or into the universe. But here we are talking about exploration and therefore um, uh, the ISS, Moon and Mars are for us the main destinations. Quite different. The moon is always with us. Um, you can see it day by day, and it takes only a week to go there and back. So you can do it even during summer vacation, or you could do it through the next uh, Igluna uh, next year. So if there's a uh, transportation available, by the way, I hope that it will happen as well. Igluna 2021. If you go to Mars, then it's a totally different story. It takes about two years to go there and back because the Mars has a different orbit around the Sun than the Earth. And there are many, many more problems if you go to Mars concerning health, psychology, radiation, communication, etc. So therefore, we have at this time, we are looking all, only to go to the Moon with astronauts and with robotics, we go also to Mars. We heard about also uh, this morning that there is a word of colonization. And Stephen Hawking uh, warned, he said, humanity may have less than 600 years to leave Earth. I'm, I'm not happy about this quote because it looks like that we can leave Earth if we really destroyed this very nice planet. So therefore we should take care of our planet first. Of course, we should uh, look to other planets, to other bodies like the moon, but not to stay there forever, but to do research uh, for some certain time. And therefore, the next place to go is the moon. The moon is really a fascinating body. When I started to promote the moon, uh, some scientists told me, oh, Mr. Werner, you are only a civil engineer. You have no idea about the moon. The moon is just a dead body. Meanwhile, we know that it is quite different. The moon has water. The moon has some interesting metals. The moon has materials of different types. Uh, so it's really an interesting body. Therefore, it's clear that uh, humans always were looking towards the moon. You know Jules Verne, but also uh, there was an important movie at the beginning of last century, so something like 100 years ago. It was a woman in the moon, which was really, uh, even with today's uh, knowledge, was really uh, very future oriented. The interesting thing of this movie is also that the countdown was invented in that movie. It did not exist before. Uh, but uh, when Fritz Lang uh, made the, the film, he thought there must be something when the people are waiting for the launch and therefore he invented the countdown. Now we are in a different setup. Uh, humans have to have been on the moon. And the question is what to do now. So the vice president of the United States announced last year, let's go back to the moon. One should never contradict a vice president, but I do so. Why? The following case. So this is the past. This was the astronauts um, in the in 69 and the following years uh, going to the moon, uh, observing the moon, being there for a very short time, for hours or for days, and uh, then they came back. And so, yes, let's celebrate the past. It was very nice what they did. Let's also at the same time prepare for the future. And the future means for me, therefore, not going back to the moon, but going forward to the moon. Forward to the moon means uh, not in, uh, in, a, in a race in space, but go together, go there and stay there for longer, not for colonization, but to stay there to, to work on, on the surface of the moon and go there in an international setup and go there with private companies, with public actors, maybe also tourism. And uh, to, to really to give a word for that, I called it the multi-partner open concept, meaning we have different partners from uh, public and private sources. We have uh, different countries. And what we are doing is very different things. So from uh, human and robotic missions to communications, logistics, fundamental research, all of this and also the moon can be a stepping stone to go further into our universe. So multi-partner open concept is not a single project. It is a concept, an overarching concept, a concept you could call it a vision. And then a journalist told me multi-partner open concept, you cannot sell. And therefore, yes, we need always narratives for what we are doing. And therefore the word was invented, call it moon village, because a village is uh, what it is. That means different people, different uh, actors from different sources are coming there, working together on the same place 
the moon. And that means that the moon should be also a free and open access, not limited by nationality or any other uh, point. So this was the beginning of a new era of discussing about the moon, and it was quite interesting, the reaction in the public, you see here in the, in the news in the United States, it says, um, uh, European Space Agency eyes future moon village. So therefore, they were surprised that suddenly Europe is a driver for going there. There was uh, immediately lots of ideas, for instance, uh, to use the in-situ resources to build also some structures, shelters, or also on the far side of the moon to build a radio observatory to look deep into the space without uh, any radiation coming from the Earth. So you're in the shadow um, of the moon. There were ideas also from uh, private companies to build up communication terminals to have a better communication and also NASA then joined uh, to go uh, to the moon uh, and they uh, said okay we can reduce uh, our um, knowledge not to uh, just one thing but we will use it to do new things for instance to build also streets and roads on the surface of the moon. My only fear was that they will use also the speed limit of the United States uh, on the moon. So therefore, we should not uh, copy everything. And uh, there are also the big guys whom we all know, Jeff Bezos, he said not only, OK, not only a, a moon village, but a city on the moon. Um, and he said, oh, and then also uh, uh, even Elon Musk, who was talking all the time about Mars only, he started then, um, OK, in 2017, he said, OK, it's also a good idea. Let's go there and have a moon base, so he called it moon base alpha. And uh, some companies from Scandinavia immediately had some idea about what the moon village could look like, and they presented this picture to promote their own, own products. So where are we really? Are we going to the moon? Is it just a vision? Is it just an idea? No, we are going there. The Europeans are going there together with the Americans. The new American launch system, SLS, uh, will use European technology uh, it's called here European Service Module, ESM, which is directly connected to the new uh, capsule Orion. And by that, the Americans will fly to the moon, especially to a location which is called Lunar Gateway, which is something like a bus stop close to the surface of the moon in order to go from there to the surface of the moon and back. So all of this is really reality now. So therefore, the Gluna ideas, the Gluna projects can be reality very soon. What is important for me is that uh, we are really looking to space not only as a space activity, but also as an activity which is we really have some impact on people on Earth. You see here the European astronaut Timothy Peak from UK talking to a young boy. And um, it's very clear we all are inspired by space uh, activities and, and fascination is a very good uh, move in our brain. So if it goes from fascination to inspiration, meaning we are thinking about what is happening, then it's another positive uh, move in our brains. And if from inspiration, we go to motivation saying, ah, somebody had a dream in space. Now, why could I not have also a dream for my uh, topics on earth and therefore I do something. So it can be really a motivation for a better world. And I believe that this is one of the power of space uh, even if you're working not in the space itself. So, for instance, like me, as I was a civil engineer and only very late entered into the space sector. So I'm very happy that IGLUNA exists, that uh, we have this IGLUNA 2020 now, unfortunately, in a virtual mode. But I'm quite sure that the results will be as impressive as last time. And I'm looking forward to hear about all the different uh, projects in detail. And I'm also looking for all these young people making some positive uh, work for the future and hopefully we can meet uh, in person rather soon. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope and wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Jan Werner. This was very insightful and we agree with your vision of the Moon Village and let's go forward to the Moon. With this, we conclude today's inauguration session. I would like to thank again all the student teams for presenting their projects again. GISA Director General Jan Werner and Renato Kruprom from the Swiss Space Office for joining us in this session. And I would like to invite everyone to join us for the next session this afternoon at 13 hours Central European time for the first project show. 
And all of you watching in YouTube, check out the description here below. There's a survey link. You would help us a lot if you would fill out that link so we get to know you better for the, our next future events. Thank you, everyone, and see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.